Hey, how's it going, saints? <clears throat> so, uh, in obedience to God, to Jesus Christ, I've decided that I was going to share this. So, I was actually waiting to see if there would be more, you know, insight that the Lord would give me in regards to this that I'm about to share. But I think He's given me all the insights that I would need to know. And that the most important thing that I do right now is to share what little things that He is telling me. <clears throat> And so uh, I'm about to share with you guys a dream that I had about, I think, two, yeah, about two days ago. It's a very interesting dream. I'm not too sure what to make of it. And I'm not saying that anyone should take this as gold because at the end, we all see through the glass dimly. And so I don't have all the information in regards to this at all. But I know for a fact that it is something that the Lord will want us to share. So uh, before uh, we do so, let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you so much for those who will be listening to this message. And I thank you so much, Father, for giving me this vision in the night. Though, Father, many of the things in the vision seem kind of hard for me to understand. I know that in sharing this dream that someone else will be able to see this and tell me, or tell me more as to what this is about. I pray, Lord, that you will open up the minds and hearts of the uh, listeners. And I pray that you will speak through me. And delivering this message to your people for it is a significant message but it's only a piece of the puzzle in which i can't see in full i pray lord that you will continue to forgive us for all the sins that we have committed may you continue to purify us lord and help us to walk in newness and you may we continue to confess our sins daily and crucify the flesh daily lord so this way we can be made that spotless bride ready to be raptured up and meet you in the clouds we love you lord we thank you lord for this day once again and it's in jesus name we pray I'm in. Okay, so about two nights ago, while I was sleeping, uh, I was taken to uh, this particular place in the dream. Now, I know this was in America, but I didn't know where in America it was in until later on in the dream. But uh, in this dream, there was this uh, brother from the church that I go to who was with me. Um, and then there was this other female, I think it's a sister in the church or someone, I can't remember who it is who was with us. And then we were visiting uh, this other person that we knew. I didn't, I never seen this person in real life, but in the dream, it was as if we knew who this guy was, like we were friends with him. And so we were visiting him into like one of his hotel rooms uh, to meet up with him and then go out and about in, um, in the States, you know, in the streets. And so when we go into his room, what we, what I noticed is that this room was controlled by a, an AI, an artificial intelligence computer that pretty much, you know, you walk in there, you speak voice commands, and then it would do different things in this hotel room. And so it wasn't a big hotel room. It was like a one room uh, hotel room where a little far off ahead of me to my right was like, you know, the kitchen area where there's the refrigerator and the stove and stuff. And like beyond that is like, you know, some door that leads to the stairs. I guess it's like two exits, you know, in this particular room. And so while we were in this room, he decided that, hey, he's going to be right back and go and get something. And it was normal to us. Uh, but I think like also in the dream, we were supposed to meet up with him when he left. I guess we weren't ready to leave the hotel room yet. But when he walked away, you know, it was like, OK, is everybody ready? I guess we were we were taking a break after like, you know, being outside. And so we were in a hotel room relaxing and it, we were about to make our way out. Uh, but the strange thing is, is that while we were trying to make our way to the main, I guess, bedroom area, because remember, we were we were for some reason we were in the kitchen area and there was like a couch that we can sit in. And then as we were trying to make our way into the main area to go out the front door, the AI, the artificial intelligence, you know, computer in the room tried to shut us in. Like the door started closing on us and trying to lock us in the room. And I thought this was strange, but we managed to get out the room and make our way out into the streets. And so I'm thinking like, okay, why is it that this, you know, computer was trying to lock us in the room? But before actually we went into the streets, there was like this little safe that was in his hotel room. You know, like when you go to a hotel room, there's like the little electronic safe you could put your valuable items in. Well, that's what was in the room. And so I was supposed to, I guess I was supposed to get something out of there for him, for the guy who we were visiting. And I didn't know the combo to the safe. But somehow, you know, the brother who was with me um, from the church I go to was able to tell me the combo, you know, figure it out. 
and we opened it up and just got like his wallet and stuff and we were and we made our way out now here's where the strange thing comes in is that the moment that we made our way out into the city it was like you know a closing city with skyscrapers and small you know streets and stuff like that but it was a big you know metropolitan busy city we began to see water what I mean by water, I mean like a tidal wave of water, maybe 20, 30 feet high, that was moving through every city block. It was just moving through the city blocks and it was just sweeping people away. And then there was a panic that was in the air. And so a lot of people started running away to trying to escape this flood water that was coming in. I guess you could compare it to like, you know, the uh, tsunami that was in Japan, maybe, or there was a particular movie that came out, I think it was Day After Tomorrow or something like that, and the way that the waters were moving through the cities is the same way that it was in a dream. It was really, you know, there was panic in the air, and so everyone began to run away, but as you began to run, you could look to the left of every block that we were passing and to the right, and you see the waters was coming in and just sweeping people away as they're trying to escape. And so next thing you know, I was running, 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 running. And I realized, I don't know what happened to the, you know, the brother that I was with, you know, from the, from the church. And, you know, the female who was with us, I didn't see him anymore. I'm not too sure what happened. Maybe we got separated. And so I kept running, 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 running for my life to try and avoid the uh, floodwaters. I was trying to overtake everyone. And then I, I made my way, you know, through the front door of this Catholic church. You know, because I was going to go through the front door and then, you know, the front entrance and trying to make my way through the back entrance. And so while I ran through the, uh, the Catholic church, you know, this building that was Catholic, obviously, uh, I came across a window and this window was locked up. You know, it was a big, you know, solid glass window and no one can get through. And people were saying that, oh, we're trapped, we're trapped. Me, personally, on panic mode, I decided, hey, I'm going to use the common sense thing and break through the window and escape and start running away. And so that's what I did. I broke the window open. I went through the window and it was, I was about to begin to run. And the next thing you know is that when I look back behind me, I see the Pope. The Pope was trying to get over the same window in which I broke open, but because of his old age, he couldn't come over. And then there was this guy to my left who was running for his life as well. He stopped. He looked at the Pope and then he said, you Catholics are going to get what's coming to you. And then he ran off again, you know, to try and escape the floodwaters. And I was like, OK, that was weird. And then when I looked back, I saw the floodwaters was coming. And so what I did is I helped the Pope out the window. So this way he could try and escape, too. And he couldn't walk. But because of the fact that, hey, I was trying to escape from my life, I left him his walking stick and then he began to start moving. And then so I started running. But he didn't get too far as the floodwaters came in and swept him away, too. And so eventually we kept running until we made it out the city and we ran up this hill. And so we ran as high up the hill that we can. And when we were up there, I looked around and there's only a few people who managed to escape the floodwaters that was overtaking the city that I was in. Now, I didn't know what the city was at first until the next scene happened. And so while I was standing on top of the hill looking at the floodwaters, I was immediately taken to this vision where there is this military, you know, this person who is obviously in a U.S. military who, was, who shot a ground-to-air missile into outer space. Now, I don't know why this missile is being shot into outer space, but what I knew is, is that immediately I was, taking away, I was taken away from the ground and I was taken up, you know, into outer space where I'm looking down at the map of the United, at the, uh, United States. I was looking at the map of America. And so when I was being pulled into space to see this map of America, I was looking at this ground-to-air missile that was shot into outer space for some reason. I didn't know why at first until I was taken even further out and given a big picture of America and this missile that was being shot in outer space. And so what I saw is that this missile was going up to intercept this other missile that was coming into America. And I was like, okay, like immediately in the dream, I knew what this missile was. This was a intercontinental ballistic missile, a nuclear missile. And so while this ground and air missile was shot into outer space to intercept this intercontinental ballistic missile, the ground to air missile, I guess it was a Patriot missile, it uh, ran out of fuel. And so when this missile ran out of fuel, it just floated 
right where it was. And the fact that it floated in the air instead of going back down to Earth means that this missile went as high as out of space to try to, you know, intercept this intercontinental ballistic missile. And so while this ground air missile ran out of air, I saw this the ballistic missile, the nuclear missile, was heading towards America. And so as it was heading towards America, yeah, so as this missile was heading towards America, there was nothing that was going to stop it. And I seen, in the vision that I was in, I was looking and I saw the direction that the missile was going to. It was going to the east coast, the eastern part of America. And when I looked at the map of America, immediately I saw that the east coast, before the nuclear bomb even detonated, was already destroyed. And I think that the reason why that it was heavily damaged, it was destroyed, is because that's where the tsunami hit. Is that wherever I was, I was on the east coast when a tsunami came in, and the entire east coast from the, uh, from the north to the south was completely damaged by the tsunami that came in. And so then I saw the nuclear missile go into that exact same area, and it detonated in, mid in midair. And it gave off this blue electromagnetic pulse. It's like you can actually see the pulse coming out of it. It was not your typical nuclear explosion that you see that you saw in uh, Japan, you know, World War II movies or any other movies that you may uh, have saw a nuclear bomb being detonated. It was a blue electromagnetic like uh, light that actually protruded from this nuclear detonation, which occurred in the air over the East Coast. And immediately, you begin to see all the lights on the east coast go out i mean i i actually even seen the demarcation line where the light stops and a light starts in america and so about a third of america all of the east coast was plunged into you know complete darkness and then while i was looking at this vision like oh snap you know a nuclear bomb just detonated over the east coast you could see that there, there was this little beacon that was going off at the demarcation line to where the light stops and the light starts now it was like in the middle it's like in the midsection of where of the united states map from north to south if you go to the midsection that's where it was coming in from um, the east coast at the demarcation line and immediately as i see this beacon light was going off at the beginning where light starts again I was zoomed right into this beacon. And the moment I was zoomed into this beacon, what I immediately saw is that there is a news reporter who is out there right at the demarcation line in complete distress. And you can see that everything behind them was completely destroyed. It was completely damaged. There were fires in the background. And it was like, you know, a red dust that was in the air. And immediately he says that um, we, were, we were attacked. We were attacked. We were attacked. And then afterwards, I woke up from the dream. Now, I don't know what to make of this dream at all, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to give my opinion as to what I believe this pertains to. But what I am going to say is, is that this is something that the Lord wants me to share, because whenever he shows us a dream in the night, he doesn't want us to keep this for ourselves, but to release it to the body of Christ and that they too may look at it. And maybe someone else had a dream in regards to this and they could say, yeah, I had the same dream the other day. And then therefore we can start putting the pieces together as a body of Christ and see what's the big message that the Lord is trying to tell us. All right. So that's all I have. And um, <clears throat> if you guys have any, you know, input in regards to this dream, just let me know. All right. Thank you all for listening.